ants are some of the most vital and interesting creatures on Earth. They can be found on every continent except for Antarctica and are a vital part of the Earth's many ecosystems. However, ants can be a bit of a problem, especially when they compete with other species of ants to the point where they endanger other species that feed off of said ants within their ecosystem. What I am referring to now is the threatened Texas horned lizard, or as it is more affectionately known as the horny toad. This lizard feeds off of red harvester ants within the Texas ecosystem and has been threatened by a new form of wildlife, which is known as the imported red fire ant. These ants are imported from Brazil and are an invasive species in the wild Texas ecosystems. These ants do not regularly prey upon red harvester ants. However, they outcompete red harvester ants for resources, thus leading to a decline of the red harvester ants population as well as the population of horned lizards, as they are unable to eat the fire ants due to their aggressive behavior. This was supposed to be a small case study to document the response time and number involved in stimulating a nest of imported red fire ants. However, Due to the inability for me to be able to find red fire ants in my area, instead I decided to turn my direction towards being able to understand and being able to identify the response time and the reason for a lower amount of aggression in red harvester ants to try and piece together and explain why they were being outcompeted for resources in the race against the imported red fire ant for survival. This project was undertaken as a means by which to try and understand the issue of red harvester ants being driven out by imported red fire ants. And with the lack of imported red fire ants to observe, understanding the species that was being driven out by their new competitor was another good way of trying to understand and bring awareness to this issue. Red harvester ants were tested in this study through three means of stimuli to try and figure out which one they responded to the most and what might be the force that drives their overall response and their feeding behaviors. This project was originally designed to tackle the issue of imported red fire ants and question how their aggressive response would allow them to outcompete the native red harvester ants, but due to the difficulty and numerous failed attempts to locate any fire ants in time, this study was shifted towards trying to understand the response of ants in general and why some species, like that of the red harvester ant, respond to some stimuli and not others with less numbers. The purpose of this small study was to observe the reactions of red harvester ants and determine what would trigger a larger response from them, as well as to understand what might trigger a response from other ants, like the imported red fire ant. The question that still remains is what stimulates their response mechanical, chemical, or biochemical stimuli? That is the question that will be attempted to be answered today. The equipment and methodology of this study were as follows. For the equipment, there was a mechanical, chemical, and biochemical stimuli that were used throughout this experiment. A metal ball was used as the control, and a stick as well as a metal wire were used as mechanical stimuli. Tap water was used as a control for the chemical stimuli, and vinegar and baking soda were used as the regular stimulator. Dead crickets, unfortunately, were all I was able to obtain access to while I was working on this study. They were originally intended to be the stimuli control, but seeing as how I was unable to gain access to live crickets, this was the only option left for me. And as well with all of the other equipment, a container for mixing the baking soda and vinegar was utilized, and an iPhone camera was utilized in being able to film some of what you will see in this video today. The methods with which the study was conducted were done with limited resources and with three colonies of ants that were picked at random. The metal ball and tap water were used at the first mound and not at the second or third one due to their consistent results. Dead crickets were utilized as there was no means by which to gain easier access to live crickets for this experiment and there was no proper control for the biochemical stimulus. Each was tested at the base of the ant nests and were utilized to stimulate the ant nests and elicit a response from the ants and the reactions were found. The results were as follows. 
Ants in groups B and C responded much more to the stimulus provided by the presence of a dead cricket than they did to the stimulus provided by the vinegar and baking soda reaction and the stimulus provided by the wire that was used to try and disturb the nest. Ants responded far more greatly to the biochemical stimulus than they did to the mechanical stimulus, and the chemical stimulus elicited a greater response than that of the mechanical stimulus. To further conclude this study, I want to try and bring this video to a close with a proper discussion. As Bastien Dries states, ant foragers collect seeds and dead insects and store them in the nests as food for their colony. As further research into this project came about, I began to realize that what largely would explain why the ants went after the dead cricket and reacted much faster than they did to the mechanical or chemical stimuli was the fact that these particular species of ants will tend to go after a dead and rotting corpse than they will react to a possible threat as in the case of the chemical stimulus or in the case of a physical stimulus. However, the chemical stimulus did elicit a response from the ants, indicating that their chemical receptors picked up on the chemical reaction of the vinegar being mixed with the baking soda and prompted a response. This response to a chemical stimulus that could have been mistaken as a threat was not as strong as the stimulus provided by the dead cricket and prompted a measurably smaller response. However, the study has many flaws to it. The return of patroller simulates the onset of foraging as I learned through research for this project. And as such, this study was conducted with little time between different stimuli and was a somewhat flawed study in terms of results, as I ended up laying the dead cricket first before I did any of the other stimuli. This study was conducted with little time between different stimuli and was a somewhat flawed study in terms of that result. The red harvester ants were far more preoccupied with the prospect of food than they were with the possibility of oncoming danger. Another flaw involved in this study was the lack of controls on the second and third ant mounds, as well as the lack of time given between observation periods, which may have influenced the results. One thing that this study did clearly point out was that the amount of red harvester ants that responded to each stimulus was small. Even with the largest response of over 20 ants, that number does not compare to that of their imported competitor, the imported red fire ant. As Braley S. Vinson and John Jackman explain, the relationship between imported red fire ants and red harvester ants, red imported fire ants generally do not prey upon harvester ants, but outcompete them for resources. Red harvester ants may be larger in size, but they are generally not as quick to respond in numbers as imported red fire ants are. Red harvester ants are also not likely to sting or act as aggressively as imported red fire ants. So what can be concluded from this video? While there were many flaws involved in this study, it is clear that the red harvester ants do respond greatly to biochemical stimuli and moderately to chemical stimuli. Mechanical stimuli do not play a big role in eliciting a response from an ant nest, but chemical and biochemical stimuli do tend to bring out a larger response from red harvester ants. The response of red harvester ants is not in as large of a number as the imported red fire ant, which may be contributing to the decline in numbers of the red harvester ant populations in the state of Texas. For the survival sake of the threatened horn lizard and for the survival sake of the red harvester ant in the region of Texas, the understanding of the response of imported red fire ants and red harvester ants is vital to the survival not only of those two species, but to the survival of the entire ecosystem itself, most likely. There are many different species that exist within the state of Texas, from the coast to the mountains, and some species that are endangered like that of the horny toad are to be considered as endangered in practice and should be safeguarded with every effort that we can to ensure the survivability not only of the species within the ecosystem, but to ensure the survivability of the ecosystem itself so that we do not experience an ecosystem collapse here in the state of Texas. Thank you so much for watching. This was a project created for my animal behavior class at Sol Ross State University Rio Grande College. And I would like to thank my professor for giving us an opportunity to be able to create such projects like this. 
This is not typically what I would put up on this channel, but it was something that I did enjoy making, and I hope that you all enjoyed watching it. As always, thank you so much for watching.